circuits to the iRacing service just don't stop coming and that is in no way at all a complaint. iRacing's newest circuit, Motorland Aragon, is also one of Spain's newest circuits having just been opened in 2009, making iRacing older than the track itself. Aragon is 5 kilometers in length or just a little more than 3 miles long and hosts a wide variety of racing, but perhaps most famously for hosting the MotoGP for several years now. This circuit does have plenty to talk about from a unique track limits approach, 7 different track layouts, aggressive anti-cut curbs that I've not seen any other track at all have, and a bouncy wall that is great for car launches if you so please. From a graphic standpoint, the circuit is beautifully detailed where it needs to be. Everything on the track is modelled exceptionally well and recreated fantastically to what I've seen from the circuit in the real world. However, it has to be said that visually this is not the most exciting track with the circuit surrounded by hills and open land, with the only eye-catching section being the rock wall beside the Turn 12 chicane complex. Like Willow Springs in the last video, Aragon does not feature any night lighting, so good luck to those tackling the circuit in an endurance race. The circuit consists of predominantly medium speed corners that lead into slower corners, constantly scrubbing off a little more speed with each passing corner. Turns 4 and 5 are a great example of this with a high speed approach into turn 4 at over 200 km an hour before breaking hard for turn 5 while still turning through turn 4. This becomes a ballerina dance on the brake pedal to ensure you're not locking the inside front tyre due to unloading the car on the left hand side. I love these kind of corners and I feel they suit me as a driver and the racing line also naturally leads to overtaking opportunities as you leave yourself exposed up the inside for a dive. Suppose you're a bit like me and enjoy these corners. In that case, you're in luck as turns 6 and 7 are just a repeat in the opposite direction but with a slower speed and more open approach, your main difficulty at this particular corner complex will be simply spotting a brake marker, which is a bit of a common theme at this circuit. There are many points around the lap where you'll be looking for markings on the ground for reference, as you won't find many beside the circuit beyond the occasional painted white line going perpendicular to the track. There are brake boards in a couple of places on the circuit, but these are so high up on the catch fencing that I find these way too tricky to look for as your line of vision whilst driving will be so far removed from the corner itself if you're looking for these particular markers. For those who strongly dislike inconsistent track limits, you'll be happy to know that Motorland Aragon has a nice consistent approach the entire way around the track, so there is no guesswork in discovering where the limit is. Rather than making a rules tab showing where the limit is for each one of the track's 18 corners, the circuit only has two rules. The white line is the absolute limit around the entire track. If the car falls outside the white line, regardless of whether AstroTurf is behind it or not, this will trigger an off track. The only exception and rule number two to this is if there is a yellow and red curb, in which case this becomes the new limit and going beyond this curb will also trigger an off track. Suppose you would like to police the track limits a bit harder than this though on the Grand Prix circuit. In that case, you can always use the touring car layer of the circuit which places movable tyre bundles around the circuit at places where track limits are often exceeded. These are honestly pretty fun to race with, but I also don't see the point as you can still exceed track limits where the tyre bundles are, just to a less egregious extent. Another of the cool layouts to race at is the outer layout which bypasses the Grand Prix's turn 12 to 15 complex and provides an insanely fast run down the back straight. This layout in a Toyota GR86 or a Mazda MX-5 would be insane with the draft battles you would get into the final corner. Please iRacing, make this happen at some point because you would be getting a bunch of iRacing top 10 moments. Both this layout and the Motorcycle Grand Prix layout utilize the more sweeping final corner to keep the average speed up just a little bit more, but personally I prefer the standard version of the final corner, which is a hard break from the back straight into a very tight hairpin where the exit will be critical to get right as you weave through turns 17 and 18 and the car is often pretty grip limited there. It's a real jeopardy kind of corner as there is so much to gain or lose on a qualifying lap here and you get the entire back straight 
to think about your approach, similar to the chase at Mount Panorama. Whilst not precisely the most exciting topic ever, the curbs at Motorland Aragon are also worth mentioning. Many of the corners on the track feature extremely small anti-car curbs in the form of a semi-sphere, and these little things are absolutely lethal if you run over them. In testing, I managed to severely impact my straight line speed with floor damage in several cars from running over these little guys. And man, oh man, the sound they make when you hit them is enough to send shivers up your spine. So by all accounts, avoid these things at all costs. The more standard rumble strips on the circuit also have significantly less grip on them as well compared to many other tracks on the iRacing service. This is most notable by breaking on the kerb into the final corner, where you'll instantly realise your deceleration is significantly impacted and you'll be sent long past the corner's apex. This is realistic and how many of the kerbs on iRacing should work, but it's worth pointing this out as not all kerbs on the sim have as big of an impact as these ones do. I think Motorland Aragon is a fantastic addition to the iRacing sim. We'll see great racing here with the long straights leading into slower corners. It is wide and open enough to allow for racing from the fastest of all cars like Formula 1, Le Mans prototypes and all your favourite GT cars, but also with enough long straights and technical sections to be entertaining for those racing in a lower powered Renault Clio, Formula Ford or the Toyota GR86, so there is no shortage of where Aragon will find itself on a season schedule. I firmly believe that this circuit is worth picking up for all iRacers on the sim. At just 15 US dollars, the track is a bargain with 7 layouts and plenty of fun to be had. At the time of making this video, the track has been out for a couple of weeks now, so guys, let me know your thoughts on the track down below. Thank you all so much for watching and if you have enjoyed it, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and otherwise, I'll see you all in the following video.